So Brian, um, as an NMR user, the common interface is, is sitting at the computer, getting your sample ready, and then once it's ready, like I have a sample here ready to go, it's adding it um, you know, to the magnet here, uh, and this one is going in sample number 35. This thing will come around, but if it wasn't an auto sampler, I'd be adding it directly into the system. We have a new 500 megahertz uh, Bruker system where uh, you can add it to this sample express and the data after collected is immediately available online. And about the time I put the sample in there, that's about the time when the average user is kind of done with uh, the instrument. Now they're just waiting on their data uh, to come about. But I thought we would take a little time and look at the instrumentation itself and uh, discuss the different components of an NMR beyond what, what a, a common user deals with on the NMR, which is just kind of inserting uh, the sample into a magnet. And so kind of starting at the top, uh, while my interface with the NMR is primarily uh, getting a sample into the magnet, uh, there's a lot of other things going on uh, with this instrumentation, and I'd love uh, for you to take a little time and explain it to us. All right, well, the first thing you see here with this superconducting magnet is we have to keep that magnet superconducting. So it takes cryogens. In this case, we have an outer doer that's filled with liquid nitrogen and an inner doer that contains the magnet coil itself that's filled with liquid helium. And so one of my main jobs is to replenish that helium and liquid nitrogen on a routine basis. Okay. And that's uh, the volume of these large uh, superconducting fields is mainly the volume of containing that liquid helium and, and liquid exactly. nitrogen. And they often sit on very beefy uh, legs, and, but for a very uh, explicit reason. Right. Contained inside these legs on this particular magnet actually is a sophisticated set of gimbals that isolate that magnet, it's levitated on a cushion of air, and then it vibration dampens the building moving because we're measuring things that are on the order of a hurt or less, building shake on that level, and we need to make sure we don't have that show up in our data. And then oftentimes NMR spectroscopists or NMR managers managing uh, NMR systems deal with the bottom part of the magnet more than the top, right? While Correct. you put your sample in from the top, it's really what the sample goes into. We say we, it goes into a magnet, which it does. It goes into the superconducting magnet. But there's quite a few components from the bottom that really play a crucial role in NMR. And so could you kind of tell us what is, is mainly involved from the bottom part of the magnet? Right. So the first thing inside the bore of the magnet, it's coming in from the bottom, is a set of shims that we use to make sure we have a perfectly homogeneous magnetic field. But inside that then comes the probe, and this probe is our antenna, and it allows us to not only excite the spins but detect our signals. And then one of my jobs is choosing which probe we want to put in there for the different types of experiments we want to do, whether that be a protein where we need high sensitivity, or we need triple resonance or different nuclei, or we want to switch and look at solid state NMR, we have different probes for each of those type of tasks. So you're right. Well, a lot of probes are getting more and more multifunctional all within one probe. It's still fairly rare that you have, you know, a modern magnet where you don't have more than one probe, especially for major modalities, like you said, for solids versus liquids. And even within liquids, oftentimes you have specialty probes for exotic nuclei or temperature ranges or things like this. Right. Um, and then the probe hooks up to a major other component of the NMR as well, right? Right. And so, and it's usually separated from the magnet, but not by much, right? Because you, it has, the probe itself hooks to the console. Right. And so could you give us a tour of that? Absolutely. So you walk over here, inside this big box is actually the, uh, he said the console, or the, the brains of the, of the magnet. So what you see here on the top this is where the frequencies are, are generated and the pulse program. So the brains of everything are here. It, it drives the experiments that we do. Um, next, you'll come down. There's an amplifier. So we send out these radio frequency waves. They need to be amplified into a certain level of power to flip the spin. So we have, and on the bottom is the, is the components that control those shimmings or the homogeneity of the magnet. And so inside here is basically you know, the, our radio station that it connects to the probe, which is our antenna 
inside the magnet, we can detect spins. And it also uh, connects to the computer, which is the other major interface a user usually starts with. Starts right. from the computer, moves over, and puts their sample in. So this is really the connection between those two. Exactly. So, well, thanks for giving us an overview of especially, you know, a modern NMR system and, you know, some of the components that are involved in that.